we, the jury in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Conrad Robert Murray, guilty of the crime of involuntary manslaughter. Three days ago, Dr. Conrad Murray was found guilty of the involuntary manslaughter of pop superstar Michael Jackson, who died at his Los Angeles home. The autopsy found Jackson had died from an overdose of the powerful hospital anesthetic propofol, which Dr. Murray admits using to treat him for sleeplessness. During the trial, Conrad Murray chose not to testify in his own defense, which meant he was never cross-examined about his actions on the day Jackson died. However, before the trial ended, he did speak to me. Murray told me he'd known Jackson since 2006 and became his friend. But at the time in question, he'd been engaged as Jackson's personal physician for his forthcoming UK tour at a fee of $150,000 a month. Conrad Murray received no payment from Channel 4 for this interview. Did Michael Jackson at any point ask you to give him propofol? Yes. And as his doctor, mm -hmm. what was your medical opinion? That it was justified generally or not justified? I did not recommend it. As I understand it, yeah. the, the use of propofol was, was your, your use of propofol for him as your patient became commonplace. Not in that sense. If propofol, I, was, I never recommended it. I would never have recommended propofol to Mr. Jackson. So, so as a doctor, yeah. if a patient demands something but you don't recommend it, in your medical opinion is not, right, not, not justified, are you right to give it to him? No. So why did you? Well, I did not give him something. I met him with something. And I felt by meeting him with such an, in, uh, such an agent on his own, he needed to get rid of it and try to res resume a more normal yeah, but, state but, of sleep. But, but you were using propofol. In fact, at one stage I read again in the newspaper uh, that you had bought four gallons of it. Well, you know, that was sensationalization. You know, whether or not they want to call it four gallons, 55 gallons, okay, but whatever you, but, you, but you did buy some propofol yes, and I did. it was for use with him. Yes, I did. So there you are supplying a substance to him, which you think in medical terms is not warranted. Well, well, here's an issue. And I will use a scenario like, and you have to look at this again. If I came to your house and, and you were a friend of mine, when unexpectedly I saw you with a gun in your hand, I can do one of two things and maybe succeed. I can tell you, stop it, and you might listen to me, or I may have to take hours to get you to hand over that gun, okay? So I would say, basically, it took me a while to take away from Michael something I thought he should not use. So, and, so you were working with him to get him off it? That's basically it. Okay. You describe Michael as, um, as drug-seeking, as suffering some form of dependency uh, that you found in multiple you know, IV sites and poor vein structure. Um, during the course of probably placing an IV in him, I felt that his veins were indeed horrific. They were very cord-like, uh, um, and they were like spider webs. And I said to Michael, you know, Michael, the only time I have seen this type of vein, venous appearance in a patient are people who are like drug users, drug abusers. And his response in a very childish voice, which I could clearly imitate, but I don't choose to do that now. It really? Is, is that is it really? Um, I, and I said yes. And that was the end of that. He would not account for that. At this point, I turned to the fateful day. Murray told the police that he administered 25 milligrams of propofol, or milk as Jackson called it, after a sleepless night at around 10.40 or 10.50 in the morning. He then said he left the room for two minutes before returning to find his patient in serious distress. What he didn't tell the police was that he'd actually spent 50 minutes on the phone to relatives and girlfriends. In my interview I said it was at least 10.40, 10.30 was already, we were beyond that. Yeah. And at that time, he pleaded for milk. In consideration of cons giving him that, I had to get the appropriate medication, get the syringes, prepare it. So he really got propofol around 10.50. So here's Mr. Jackson, 
he gets an injection of propofol, which is 25 milligram. That's it. Uh, in the initial statement, you're having uh, given Michael propofol and yes. waited until he fell asleep and felt reasonably comfortable. You then said that you left the room for two minutes to visit the lavatory. Mm -hmm. And then when you came back, uh, Michael was in some form of kind of distress. That time frame doesn't make sense because you were on the mobile phone talking to various people for something like 45 or 50 minutes. Um, I would say that this is what I can tell you I've done. So he got medicine at about 10, 50. He drifted into sleep around five minutes. I sat there. As I said in my statement, I waited as long as I felt it was, I was comfortable that the effects of the medicine propofol was gone. And then you left the room. How long was that? In my, so normally propofol would last about the effective the, um, end organ uh, sleep state would be gone in 10 minutes. I sat there for at least 30 minutes. If you look at the calls as they were coming through, yeah. I think the very first call that came through was from my daughter. Uh, I did not even pick okay. it up. But, but the point is, you're out of the room for a lot more than two minutes. No, I'm still, and it's a lot I'm, later. No, I'm still at the bedside. Taking the calls at the bedside. Let me clear that for you. After, in, after giving him his propofol, I sat there long enough with Mr. Jackson, looking at him, checking his vital signs, checking his oximeter, making sure his pulses were fine, making sure he was asleep. And he was asleep, but not as deep as normally he would sleep because he was not snoring. And then by 11, 20, 25, I decided, well, look, if the calls are going to start coming in, and if I need to call and he's now comfortable, the effects of, of propofol is more than 20 minutes gone. Okay, but the point is this, you never mentioned the phone calls to the police. They never asked me. But you're, but you're, supposed to, you're telling them what's happened. Listen to me. I sat there and the, we never interrupted the policemen. We never told them what they could ask, what they could not ask. They did not ask me the question. I did not think it was important. So let me ask you another question then. What do you think happened? It has been speculated that Mr. Jackson swallowed lots of propofol, but that's now been discounted. It is suggested by some people that uh, you hooked him up to a drip and as a result of the longer term infusion of propofol, he ended up with a poisonous concentration in his blood. There is another suggestion, uh, again, widely reported, that he may have medicated himself. What do you think happened? I cannot answer your questions, you know. It's so, what, what does I say? I mean, because you ask, there's so many things that, you, that requires a story of its own. I think, first of all, let's go back to 1120, when I left his side. Because that has not been... When I left his side, I was satisfied that the effects of propofol was gone. I went to the adjacent. Mr. Jackson was in the master room that was compact, It was separated into five compartments or chambers. I was in the chamber right adjacent to where he was, feeling that at least if he got up or he called for me, I would hear him. I then conducted phone calls right in the bedroom next door because I did not want to disturb his sleep. At the end of my conversations, or thereabout, with the last inconsequential phone call I was making, rather than going back to him right away, I thought I would go ahead to the farthest, the distant chamber, to urinate. That I did. And that's when they talk about two minutes. I went to the very, very last chamber to urinate, then came back. But all of the time that I was in the adjacent room, I felt that I was close to Mr. Jackson. Does that help you? It does. Do, do you understand why people think that you are culpable here? On the face of it, there are no medical notes. It's not regarded as appropriate by lots of people who use propofol at home. You had no trained assistants. There was no CPR board, you know, a board that you could do compressions on. Uh, there was no mention of propofol uh, to the paramedics or to the doctors when you got to the hospital. It, it does look like, I mean, no medical records. It looks like a catalogue of errors. On your Let me ask you a question. You call it a catalogue, call it a compendium, use any term that you like. But I'll ask you this. What does culpable mean and culpable of what? Because you're a doctor. Am I culpable of being a doctor? No, you're, because you're a doctor, you're culpable. Because we, culpable expe because, of what? Because we expect Cul we expect standards of standards and practices to be to be. We expect good. We expect high standards from doctors. That's why the doctors. That's I why they're I, certified. I, I think my no medical notice doesn't I, sound like high I standards think, to me. I it? think my standards has been impeccable. Now, if you tell me, Doctor Murray, it was really stupid. It was a careless thing. You should have had notes. I'll say, you know what, I agree. 
If you tell me I'm culpable, I want to know what you mean, what is culpability? Are you saying that because I did not have any medical notes, that medical note, the absence of a medical note was responsible for well, his death? No, no, but the absence of medical notes makes it very hard to get to the bottom of what indeed did in fact happen. That's the whole point of medical notes, they're recorded as you go. It was not, it was not, I always write notes. The setting in which I was did not give me that opportunity to do it. And clearly, I did not. Was this a mistake on my part? Absolutely. But the absence of notes was not responsible for his death. It, it, see, it does, it does, I take that point. It does look like for $150,000 a month, which was the, the fee I understand, uh, you essentially did whatever Michael Jackson asked you to. Less doctor, more supplier. I am in no way any of what you just mentioned. Well, you and $150,000 that you mentioned, guess what? I am yet to receive one dime of it. Do, do, do you accept that it does look staggeringly incompetent? At least. <sighs> then you know what? I would say probably for doctors who write in, incomplete notes, or if I were to... Well, that wasn't the only issue, wait, was it? No, no, I'm saying if doctors does not write if doctors don't write notes, and for those who write incomplete notes, and it includes me, then you know what? You have just included 90% of the world's population of doctors. Let me ask you one more question. I have to... I have, if, I have, if, I have, if, I you, you said... I, I, read, I read an article. Just let me ask you this. Maybe in time. Okay. okay. Just let me ask you this. I, I read an article. You said that... This is very early on. You said to a journalist, you said...